Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video, which is a companion video to our previous one on the classical English. In this video, Alpha Zero plays a fine game as white in the classical English against Stockfish, who's black. And the theme of Alpha Zero's play is to make the black dark squared bishop awkward. And in that way, Alpha Zero's pieces can become much more active than Black's. Yeah, it's a lovely uh, exploration of the theme of um, um, keeping uh, your own active pieces and exchanging off the opponent's active pieces and leaving them with passive pieces. Let's take a look at the game. OK, welcome back. We are going to have a look at this excellent game. Um, Alpha Zero started with 1c4. Uh, this was the last move that was specified after this both engines are on their own so stockfish's uh, choice as black um, invariably actually uh, against uh, the english um, is a plan with uh, with one e5 g3 again alpha zero's uh, favorite continuation also recommended by mihai marin the uh, the english expert as the uh, the best uh, move order for white uh, the idea is in actual fact is that um, um, white delays committing the knight to c3 until um well until later in actual fact until it's supported to move to d5 um because uh, whenever white goes uh, knight c3 then bishop b4 from black is uh, is quite a big option and here we are i mean this is uh, one of the major lines of the classical english but now that you've got a bishop on g2 you can uh, play knight d5 and uh, the knight is supported there so the main move is bishop c5, but just uh, as in a previous video, um, Stockfish plays castles. And here Alpha Zero plays the same move as it did in the previous video, which is 6a3. The normal grandmaster move at this point is 6e3, uh, but 6a3 is also known. Yeah, this is, um, and actually, you know, when you see what uh, what Alpha Zero does with it, it looks very, very reasonable. It's uh, one of those strange things, really, that, um, uh, you know, um, that dark squared bishop trying to exchange itself off for a knight and then ending up getting uh, chased around uh, by white pawns. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's quite a, an interesting uh, point of the opening. So b4, bishop d4, rook b1, and now this move d6. So in the previous video, um, Stockfish played a6 and kept its uh, bishop safe on a7 once it was chased back. Here after d6, knight f3, uh, Stockfish played bishop b6. So Stockfish isn't afraid here of giving up the bishop pair. So white could play knight takes bishop, pawn takes bishop. Uh, but actually Alpha Zero chooses a different move here. Yeah, it's one of those funny things, isn't it, really? I mean, in a way, you, you sort of understand that Black shouldn't be afraid of giving up his dark square bishop because he was prepared to do it when he played bishop b4, threatening bishop takes c3. Uh, yeah, I mean, knight b6, a takes b6. There have been quite a few correspondence games with this. Um, I think, you know, white's uh, a little bit better with the two bishops, but it's nothing uh, amazing. Black's uh, pieces are pretty logically placed. Um, Alpha Zero does something different. Alpha Zero loves to, uh, in the English, seems to love targeting this dark squared bishop, really trying to shut it out of the game, make it passive. And um, for that reason, uh, Alpha Zero leaves that bishop on b6 and plays knight takes f6. Um, I think the reason for that actually as well is that it, it might surprise you, why don't you just let black take on d5? But I think that um, Alpha Zero likes these positions, for example, after d3 takes takes likes these positions when black plays knight d4 you know and uh, allows all the knights to be swapped off i think less keen when black plays knight e7 um and then can play c6 later to uh, to get rid of the d5 pawn so um um alpha zero just prefers to take the knight on f6 and just keep the h1 a8 diagonal open alpha zero also likes these closed centers so in that previous line um when black would play c6 then the center would be open again okay so um um the game continued a5 castles a takes b4 a takes b4 and um bishop g4 which uh, was a novelty from uh, stockfish uh, quite a natural move um a number of moves have been played i think rook a7 has been played h6 has been played it's um it's just a um an interesting english position 
So Bishop G4 is um, a little bit funny in a way because um, uh, Alpha 0 chased the bishop away with H3, Bishop B6, and then Knight G5 threatened to exchange off the bishop. And um, well, actually, uh, Stockfish retreated the bishop back to C8. So that's um, a few moves really where uh, Stockfish has not achieved a great deal. However, the question in the position is whether um, Alpha Zero has achieved anything. Um, H3, Knight G5, they've been tempo gaining moves, but you know, do they fit at all into anything like a whole plan? Or is the knight just gonna have to retreat and you just say, oh, well, I, I haven't gained very much. When I saw this position for the first time, it wasn't clear to me that white is better at all. It, it looks sort of fairly equal, but looking at white's next maneuver, um, it manages to get Black's bishop very awkwardly placed. Yeah, so what um, Alpha Zero plays here is knight e4, uh, queen g6 was uh, Stockfish's choice in uh, in this game, and then Alpha Zero played c5, and uh, d takes c5, b c5, and bishop a5. And this is what we mean when we say Black's bishops awkwardly placed because it, it's kind of floating a bit on that A file. Uh, so it can't really ever easily get over to the king's side. It's, it's sort of stuck in one place. It's, it's not trapped, but it, uh, it doesn't have any moves. Well, in, in actual fact, it's, it's blocking the A file that black has opened. So black played A5 takes B4 uh, to open up the A file. And now the, the bishop's occupying it, whereas, of course, you'd really rather have the, uh, the rook sort of uh, flowing free on there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, okay, that's a, a nice little game there. So um, how are you going to make some more of it? Well, first of all, uh, Alpha Zero plays uh, this move, King H2. Which is a typical Alpha Zero plan to get the king very safe before starting action. Yeah, I mean, it uh, protects the pawn on H3 and, um, and uh, simply consolidates the king, gets the king out of any random checks that might uh, occur somewhere um, before, uh, before taking any action. Yeah, Stockfish doesn't really manage to um, uh, to come up with a, a great plan. Actually, just tries to uh, to redeploy its queen and um, um, just sort of it, Stockfish, I think, sort of hangs tight, you know, and just uh, tries not to um, uh, to damage anything too much. Um, and Alpha Zero then comes up with um, a very nice idea here. So it plays this move f4, and uh, the point of this move is that. Um, it's very similar to the last game. Uh, in that game, um, um, uh, the English game that we saw in, in our previous video, you know, Alpha Zero played h4 to h5 to h6 to weaken the uh, the kingside dark squares because Black's dark square bishop was um, um, was all all the way on the other side on a7. Um, here, the black dark square bishop's on a5, so Alpha Zero is attacking the kingside dark squares, but in a slightly different way. This time with uh, yeah combination of bishop, rook, pawn, and knight. It's like Alpha Zero is playing on one big board, like all its pieces can get to both halves of the boards, whereas Black seems to be playing on, on two halves of the board, like they, um, Bishop and Rook on the A file can't easily get over to the king's side, and so, so the centre's kind of blocked for Black, but white, all White's pieces uh, are very mobile. So after Queen E7, F5, F6, G4... It's a, a very nice move from um, uh, from Alpha Zero here. Um, actually, changing the um, um, the focus point of uh, of attack on the dark squares. So from the e5 point, um, it's now going to aim for the f6 point because g4 g5 is coming in. Because after f takes g5, then f6 would be extremely dangerous. Isn't there a tactical uh, drawback here, though? Well, there is indeed, and um, of course, uh, if anyone's going to find it, uh, Stockfish is going to find it. And what, what Stockfish finds is um, um, a very nice way to uh, to rough up the white position, to uh, to uh, to get at it and um, and ask white some questions. Um, Stockfish played this move knight b4, attacking the pawn on d3. Um, but um, if you look at Alpha Zero's evaluation, it doesn't uh, it doesn't alter at all. I mean, I think all this had been uh, Calculated in, you could say, uh, for Alpha Zero, because it uh, comes up with um, a very nice idea. Um, it plays this move: Bishop A3, Rook takes D3, Queen C1. Um, this is incredibly fraught for Black uh, tactically. Um, obviously, with this 
a2 g8 diagonal open there's uh, threats already well bishop b4 i mean the knight is already is already hanging and of course there's a queen c4 check as well that uh, that could come in of course stockfish has uh, seen all this and if anyone can balance on the edge of a precipice and keep the tactics uh, together it's uh, stockfish so this move knight c2 uh, gets the knight out of the attack attacks the bishop on a3 and the pawn on e3 as well so white plays queen takes c2 Rook takes a3, but now alpha zero plays rook fd1. And um, what you gradually notice in this position is that um, um, although black has won a pawn, uh, black's actually exchanged off a knight, which was actually doing quite nicely. It was quite an active knight. And um, it's also opened up the d-file, um, but its rook is no longer on there. The white rook is on there. So somehow in this, um, whilst it's been winning a pawn, um, Alpha Zero's pieces have just been taking better and better spots. So black only has one active piece left. The rook on a3 is more or less it in actual fact. So what so does Alpha Zero do? Alpha Zero. Sets about exchanging off that one active piece of blacks. Exactly. Rook b3. And after rook takes b3, queen takes b3, I think now it's it suddenly becomes clear just how good, you know, uh, white's pieces are and how poor black's pieces are. Um, and it gets even worse after the next few moves because um, um, Stockfish plays bishop d7, trying to develop the light squared bishop, which is a decent uh, piece for black uh, after all. I mean, it's uh, it's not encumbered by uh, by its own uh, central pawns on, uh, on e5 and f6. So what do you think alpha zero does? Swaps that one off too. Exactly. Bishop b5. It's, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we mention it so often in uh, in Game Changer, but uh, this plan of just uh, exchanging off the opponent's active pieces, leaving him only with passive pieces, it's uh, it's really something that's, uh, that's so typical of Alpha Zero. Takes, takes, c6, queen b3. And then, I mean, yeah, look at that knight now on e4. Look at, look at black's pieces here and where can they actually move? That bishop has basically uh, can't move forward at all um, and has no good moves the rook if the rook moves at all um, then it's it's just got two moves and the queen is very confined as well into the back yeah it's um i mean basically every one of white's pieces uh, piece for piece is much better than black's and um well it's sort of uh shown by this following move bishop d8 i mean um finally black manages to uh to get the um uh the bishop off that square um but it's not on a much better square really um and here alpha zero does the uh a very typical way of um of uh consolidating its advantage it gains space on uh on the other wing it's now going to try and squeeze black just a little bit more by uh moving the g pawn up to g5 um h6 g5 yeah, I mean, uh, Alpha Zero is not afraid of um, of um, uh, this pawn being taken on g5. Um, probably, actually, what will happen is that the king will move to g3, allowing the rook over to h1. You know, a new a new file of attack has been uh, opened for uh, for uh, for White. So, um, rook a8, king g3, getting the king active as well, ready to come into g4 and h5 uh, in, during the ending. And now Alpha Zero decided that it was time to uh, to cash in. Queen e6 threatening rook d7. A black can give a check, but the king just moves to uh, to h3 or uh, um, or h2, probably h3. Um, there's no worries about that. So Stockfish tries to ex tries to exchange off the queens, but after here and king g4, Stockfish resigned in this position. Um, actually can barely move anything and all the pawns are going to drop, starting with a b7 pawn, and then uh, white can just play uh, the move f6 and king f5. You see that bishop still uh, has no no good moves at all. Yeah, that bishop's still, way through the game. still very, very constricted. So, um, well, I hope you enjoyed that game. I just uh, want to uh, maybe just uh, go back to... Uh, the moment when it all started, really, which was um, uh, this plan with c5, takes, takes, bishop a5. And um, essentially, after that, uh, Stockfish, I think, was always fighting a losing battle. Um, just because it had a piece that was both blocking its own activity on the a-file um, and also quite a long way away from uh, from its king. 
Um, I mean, the situation would look quite different if that bishop was on e7, for example. And then the way Alpha Zero played was was just very, very, very typical and very nice. You know, attacking weak squares on a wing when the opponent's bishop is cut away on the um, on the other wing. And um, yeah, this typical um, idea of you know you just um, even sacrifice a pawn in order to exchange off all the opponent's active pieces. And then just leaving the opponent with um, with passive pieces. It's a very powerful, uh, a very powerful way of playing. So I hope you enjoyed that game. We've got uh, quite a few more English games to come with some uh, some very nice uh, ideas and actually quite a few uh, quite a few uh, misplaced dark squared bishops for black. Um, seems to be a bit of a theme in uh, in the English games between uh, Alpha Zero and Stockfish. So um hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't bought our book, Game Changer, do take a look. It's a fantastic book full of wonderful games just like this. And um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe as well. That's uh, And, uh, well, just keep on watching because we've got lots more videos planned. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.